what the hell's going on here? Get the tub refinished. Finally. Yep, it's time. The whole surface of the tub is rough and etched. Has been for many years. Which makes it impossible to clean. I blame the previous homeowner who tried to paint it and didn't get past the etching phase. So I had to bring in the big guns to come in here and resurface the whole damn thing. But that beats smashing it out with a sledgehammer and replacing it unnecessarily. So many people do that. I don't know why. been at it all morning. All morning started at 8 o'clock. It's now 2.40. And uh, uh, Ian is in here sanding the whole surface of the tub. I don't think he's going to be painting the outside of the tub. I'm not sure what he's doing with that. But he's been doing like prep solutions and bottles of shit and God knows what. I'm going to be putting in a new drain once he's done his, his stuff. I'm going to put a new drain in there. But I wanted that cleaned up too. Normally they don't take the drain or the shoe out, but there's a lot of rust built up in there and I want that painted and cleaned up too. So, yeah, good times. I might even paint the ceiling while I'm in here. It would be a good time to do it. It's staining from the moisture from the tub shower. But uh, he's got it all masked off. send their guys over, guy, whoever, over to do the job. And when I, when I saw the guy show up, I was a little nervous because they sent somebody who appeared to be um, doing this. They sent a kid, and I do emphasize a kid, to do the job. Um, he couldn't have been a day over 21. And I'm thinking, okay, <laughs> oh, this isn't going to go well. But, you know, it, it didn't go badly. Um, the kid was definitely green, uh, a little wet behind the ears. He's probably done maybe a couple of tubs. He had never done a shower wall before. Um, you know, so that, that kind of made me a little apprehensive at first. And rightfully so. I mean, this is my home. This isn't an apartment. You know, this isn't something I'm renting out. This isn't a log. You know, some cabin that I'm. You know, they, you know, I, I visit once every couple weekends. You know, this is my freaking house. I want it done right, and for what they charge, I expect it to be done right. Now, many of my longtime viewers know that I have a problem with almost everyone I hire to do anything with <laughs> to my house, and. You know what? It's not me. It's them. I'm going to just say it. You know, I hire a guy to do my roof. It took him eight months. You know, I hire someone to... Um, what else have I hired out? Anyway, oh, I hired a guy to do my furnace, and it took four technicians to get a tune right. Um, look, I'm really not that picky. I just want it done right. That's all I'm asking for. Um, but I've got to say, 
uh, the kid who did this job, you know, he, he did a decent job. Um, he really did a decent job. I'm not complaining, but there are some mistakes, and I'm going to point those out. And I pointed them out to him. I said, I'm sorry, but I, that's going to cause a problem for me. One of them is pretty obvious. So when they get ready to clean the tub, or after they clean it, they pull off all the caulking, and they put a, um, a sealer. <clears throat> it's Sam's SEM, Sam's sealer, which is a, um, it's a, it's a material that is, that does not break down and can withstand the epoxy coating that they spray on. I think it's actually a body sealer for automotive. Um, I saw the two briefly, <clears throat> but they seal all the gaps to prevent water from coming back in from the washing process. So they actually caulk it with a sealer first, and then they do the spray, the paint it, and then they do the finish caulking. So he got sealer everywhere. Um, and I said, you know, you're gonna clean that off before you paint it, right? <laughs> Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Because I'm just, you know, I'm asking questions. I'm paying the guy almost nine hundred dollars to do my tub, and I'm, I'm gonna ask him questions. Sue me, right? So he said he would clean off. It would, it would be a clean. You know, I won't notice it or anything. And then I come back after he does the primer, and then he does the finish coat. And I'm looking around. I'm like, what the hell? He's got. Right over here, right over here, this was really bad. He had caulking or sealer underneath the coating. And I, I called the kid and I said, what's this? And he's like, oh my God, I didn't notice that. I'm like, yeah, no. can you fix it? And he says, yes, I can fix it. So um, he says he's gonna fix that, but also he started caulking the tub. And I come in, um, <clears throat> I think he had asked me a question or something. and. I walk in and I'm looking at the caulking job. I'm like, is this the first time you've ever caulked a tub? <laughs> Honestly, that's why I asked him, okay? And he said, well, I'm not really good at it. So I said, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. <clears throat> why don't you do this? You just worry about, just do the paint work. I will do the caulking because I've had so much practice. I know how to do it just right in a way that makes me happy. If you do it and it's not right and I'm paying you to do it, I'm not gonna be happy. <laughs> and he says, I understand. He says he gets that a lot. A lot of people actually would prefer, because the thing is caulking is, it, it's not hard, but it takes experience to get it right. Otherwise it looks like a bloody mess, you know? And you get shit like this, right here. That because he did this, before the coating was completely cured, it's never gonna come off. It's now part of the tub and I will never get it off. So, um, he did get some caulking on my tile, but that's not a big deal, I can clean that up. But this is where he started, and then I, he said, well, I tell you what, let me just, if it's, if it's not right, I'll, we'll fix it, we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay. So, I come back, and he continued on. He actually did a pretty good job. I mean, I could have, I'm just being honest here, I could have done a neater job, but hey, whatever. Um, this, this section here, it's not perfect, but see, what I do is I keep a wet sponge handy, and I use, my, I use a, a finger, I wet my finger, and I run it along the bead and make it nice and perfect, and then I keep that wet sponge or towel and I wipe off the excess caulking and it looks just, just, ugh, just perfect. That's how I like it. Ah, okay. Um, you know, he tried, he really did. Now, the other thing is he asked me what color it should be and I said, well, that's what color it should be. Um, American Standard White. Let's see how far off that color is. Okay, you know what? It's pretty close. Um, so they have a color on their truck that is called American Standard White. And that is the glaze that American Standard uses. And I'm using, oh, you know what? 
Okay, I'll give him that. He got the right color. I mean, it's hard to tell. It looks like the tub is a little bit darker in person, but, you know, eh. I'll let that one slide. So, anyways. I think what it really comes down to is, now I've heard some horror stories from other, from people who have hired people to, to refinish their tubs. Um, see, the, re the refinishing, uh, the, well, the chain places, like, The chain companies, you know, they franchise out to independent contractors. They have, for, they have a lot of um, methods and um, techniques and materials that are proprietary. Um, and that only they have this particular solution or this particular this or that. And, you know, that's something that the, the franchises have access to. Plus, of course, the national attention and the, you know, and the resources to back the company. <clears throat> so that's one benefit of hiring an independent, not independent, but a, I'm sorry, a, uh, a franchise uh, bathtub refinisher. I know someone who hired a painter to do the tub, one oh, that offers tub refinishing in their product. Uh, portfolio and uh, it actually cost her a little bit less and they did the whole thing they did the surround and the tub and it was actually a bit cheaper by a couple hundred dollars this company charged me eight hundred dollars not nine I said I said nine I meant eight hundred dollars uh, to do this job to me that's a fair price considering the amount of money it saves me in um, future repairs or the thing is, this tub was, it was impossible to clean. Um, and what was happening is rust was getting into the water and it was starting to get rust stains. And I'd have to come in here with um, <clears throat> uh, this uh, iron out product. Iron out works better on iron rust than CLR. I know this from experience. Iron Out is a slightly acidic product, so um, it may even be contributing to the wear on the enamel coating, the uh, baked on enamel, ceramic, sorry, it's a ceramic coating that was on this tub. But this tub wasn't in super bad shape, it just, it was, it was looking kind of ragged and um, you just couldn't clean the freaking thing no matter what you tried. Um, so. That's what triggered me to spend the money and have this done. But again, it really did seem like you got right, right here. And I, I'm not even going to bring this up because it's like, I'm, it's not worth it. But there's a run or a sag here and here. So he put on his coating a little too heavy in that spot. Um, but one thing, so anyway, the person that I know who hired someone to do this who was cheaper, and it was a it, just an independent painter who, you know, had a tub refinishing, in their product list, um, that one came out far worse than this. Actually, that one was pretty bad. And it was so bad that and I never said anything to her, but if it were my house, I'd be paying for a do-over. Um, he had overspray everywhere. Um, the tub was just, what I mean by overspray is when you're, when you're painting something, you want to keep a wet edge, you know what I mean? Uh, when you're spray painting because if you don't you're going to get glossy parts over here and then the overspray from this section goes over here and it dulls the finish and it gives you like a sandpaper like texture and that's what happened to hers and um, <clears throat> I actually called her to find out who she hired so that I wouldn't make the same mistake but bath, uh, bath groups, but the company that I hired to do this, I, I mean, again, it all depends on the con. It depends on the installer, really, because every every installer is going to have their own level of experience and their own weaknesses and strengths. Um, but the kid who did this you know, for his first shower stall, I think he did a bang up job. But he's coming back tomorrow to fix the mistakes, <clears throat> and I'm and I'm looking. I'm looking out. 
I'm looking over the whole thing really carefully because I want to make sure I catch everything. I'm going to make him fix this here. He says he can do it with an airbrush. Okay, fine. Just fix it. <laughs> and the caulking here. I want this the way it was when I left it. Um, and uh, he still hasn't caulked this side. I'm tempted to grab my caulking gun and just do it myself. That way he doesn't have to deal with it. Uh, but I don't have this exact caulking. I don't know what he used. Um, that brings up another point. They don't use color match caulking, which is um, strange. A little, a little unusual. Right? You'd think they would have a color match caulking to go with every color code of paint they use. Okay, so the tub work is done. I'm pleased uh, that it's done. Um, so he did, in fact, come back this morning. He came an hour late. That's okay. Um, <clears throat> but he did patch it. And uh, you know what? I'm fine with it. Um, didn't do a perfect job. Clearly he was green. A little wet behind the ears, um, as the expression goes. I'm going to um, finish the caulking myself. I told him not to. I asked him not to. I really didn't like the direction he was headed with it, and I told him, "Like you need, it. you need, you really need to practice before you start doing customers' talking jobs." Um, he agreed. Uh, <laughs> whatever. That's not what I'm paying him for. But anyway, I'm not paying him to learn. I'm paying him to do the damn job. But hey. So overall, I mean, am I happy with the job he did? Well, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to say that I'm not happy with it, but I'm not impressed. Um, it's actually not the worst one I've seen by far. Um, I've heard some horror stories and I've seen some horror stories. This one is this one isn't too bad. Um, the finish is is pretty much totally cured now. Uh, nice hard saw. I mean, it, it's a solid finish, um, in that you know I think it'll I think it'll last about ten years. And then after 10 years, we have it done again. You know, that's, that's how it goes. Um, ideally, I'd like to have shipped the tub off to a company that could recoat it with ceramic, but, well, that's not going to happen either. And I'm not replacing the tub because there's no need to. <laughs> it's actually it's a beautiful tub. I like this tub. It's, it's a very nice looking unit. Um, for those of you curious, and I know there's a lot of people that are into bathroom fixtures, but this is a 1954. Uh, Elger. Uh, Elger is the company that made this tub. Based on catalogs and stuff that I've looked at, I could determine that this is an Elger tub. It also had the original Elger fixtures on it when I bought the house. It had the original drain that said Elger on it and the original um, foot valve. So, um, And the kitchen sink is also an Elger sink. So that tells me that this house would have been fitted originally with an Elger sink, possibly even toilet. Um, and white is the original color. I was kind of wondering about that. If this, if this tub had been another color at one time, because there's no way for me to know without uh, kind of scraping away the surface a little bit. But yeah, it is indeed a white tub, always has been. All right, but that wasn't the end of our fiasco. Oh no, oh my God. No, that wasn't the biggest problem we had this weekend. Nope. No way. No. Yeah, I can hear Millie in the background. <laughs> no, no way. Uh, let's take a look at our bigger problem. So we're in the uh, spare bedroom. <laughs> Got makeup on the walls, really. Um, so let's take a look at what our bigger problem was. So you see this nice, beautiful copper line that I just installed, and this nice, beautiful quarter turn valve that's not leaking that I just installed right um, that's because I just installed them <laughs> and the reason I just installed these is because um, as I was reconnecting the foot valve or the, the, the fuck that thing's called the drain I, um, I had to come in here and I opened the, the access panel and the floor is wet I'm like huh now I know he took the caulking off the tub and he did drip some water between the tub and the walls and you know that's just inevitable but what irked me is there was a lot more water than I know he leaked behind the tub and 
And I figured, well, okay, why don't we wait until the morning and see what's going to happen. We'll see what happens in the morning, if it gets any better or worse. And then we'll make a decision from there. Well, I come back in, I went into the basement, and I looked up from, because you can see the basement from here. And I'm looking up, and I see fresh water, and I'm like, oh, God. What now? So, I, uh... I already knew what the problem was. The pipe that, I'm gonna show you this pipe in a minute, but the pipe that was here, it had, um, it, when I bought the house, somebody had patched it. And I put it on my mind that, okay, yeah, I'm gonna eventually have to do something about that. Yeah, I'm gonna have to replace that eventually. And I didn't know when eventually it was gonna be. Well, I guess that'd be now. Uh, because what happened was, so it, the pipe had sprung a leak and somebody in the past decided to just cover it with uh, uh, duct tape and JB Weld. <laughs> and I gotta say, it held for a while. Um, years, probably probably 10 years. And uh, well, it, it got a little worse. And you figure with the jostling of the pipes and everything from, I had to take the, you know, the, 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 the trim ring off the valve and all that stuff. You know, something's bound to happen. And well, it happened. But it didn't get, that wasn't the worst thing. The worst thing was, so there's a valve just like this. This is a, a gate valve, I believe. And, um, no, not a gate valve. It's a, um, there's a term for it. Can't think of it right now. There was one just like that right here. And I just grazed the valve. I mean, I didn't even, because uh, I know, when you see a valve, your instinct is, I want to turn that valve. But the reality is, if you touch that valve, and it hasn't been touched in so many years, it's gonna leak, guaranteed. And you may not be able to stop it. This is one of those instances. I've had that happen in other parts of the house and I've had to replace the valves accordingly, but this is one of those instances where I touched that, I didn't touch it to turn it, I just grazed it with my hand and I noticed it started dripping. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> so I turned it, fuck it, it's gone anyway. So I opened the valve all the way, the valve was halfway closed. It wasn't even fully open. Um, it had been halfway closed for God knows how long. And uh, so I opened it up all the way and I couldn't get the flow to stop. Because usually with these valves, they, they have two positions, open and closed. And the positions in between, you don't want to be there. <laughs> you want it to be open fully or closed fully because generally they will leak if they're halfway open because you're dealing with the packing nut seal which isn't really a good seal anyway. So you want it to be one or the other. This was halfway. So I'm thinking maybe if I open it all the way, it'll stop leaking. No, I didn't have that kind of luck, unfortunately. Um, it just became a gusher. So then I closed it and it was still dripping little by little. So this is gonna dry out. We've got a new valve, a new pipe. This floor is not rotted. It's still, it's just the surface of it is a little punky. Um, so I'm not worried about that at all, really. So, and, uh, right, let's go take a look at the pipe that I ripped out. Okay, so now we're downstairs. I had some water drip on the floor, so I've got my fan going to clean that up. And here's the underside of that pipe. So this scorch mark isn't me, that was the previous plumber, um, probably a paid professional. What I do is when I'm, so, when I'm uh, when I'm soldering near a beam or anything or wood, I put a metal heat shield in between because I don't want that. And I, I guess I have different standards. Anyway, I didn't bother to dress up these solder joints. I just didn't get to it. Um, it was kind of in a rush, but I assure you it'll never leak. Uh, but here's the other end of that pipe. What I had to do is I had to cut the line because I couldn't desolder it. Well, I tried to desolder, but it just wasn't going. So I just cut it and I used a pipe bender to give the, the new pipe a get bit of a kink. So I, I bent it this way and that way, and that gave me the, made up for the half inch or so of line that I lost. And then it feeds into this. This is original plumbing, which is uh, mildly terrifying because it was the original plumbing that's, that had sprung a leak so many years ago. Is it leaking now or is that that's a solder drip? Yeah, it's just a solder drip. But this is all original plumbing from 
1954. Uh, one of my next plumbing jobs, I'm gonna have to rip all this out. Just, just from here. Just, I'm just gonna cut it right there, and then I'm gonna solder in new lines, and I'm gonna replace the sink. And it, well, it'll be part of a much bigger project, I assure you. So let's take a look at that pipe. You're gonna love this. Look at this thing. This is where it was dripping from. This pipe is in really bad shape. Um, yeah, they got duct tape and what appears to be maybe glue, not even, maybe just duct tape. Man, that's really terrible, terrible. But this valve is fairly new. Uh, this is not an original valve, this is a replacement. So originally the tub had been set up with three valves. You had your hot, cold, and then your shower valve. That's how they used to be. So you can tell if you, if you go back to the footage of upstairs, you can see where the valves used to be. And then somebody put a modern single valve, single handle valve in to replace all that. Let's take this stuff off and see how bad this pipe really is. You know, looking at it closer, it looks like it might have been leaking from the solder joint. I don't know what they thought they were doing with this duct tape. Inside the pipe, it doesn't look terrible. Um, it's not great. There's a lot of corrosion in there. Huh. I believe this also might be original plumbing as well. Let's take this valve apart and see what it looks like. Ooh, okay. A little corroded in there. Yeah. This valve is probably no more than, I'm going to say, 25 years old. Um, and it was kept in the half open position. And what I meant when I said the packing nut, see, these valves are designed, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, some of you plumbers out there might know the, might have a better answer, but I'm trying to get the, get the handle off, and I can't. I think it's peened over. There we go. Let's take the handle off. Okay. All right, well, that just happened. Okay, so what we got here, this is the nut that when the valve is fully open, I'm sorry, when the valve is halfway between open and closed, it depends on this seal, which is on the shaft. This is the packing seal or shaft seal or whatever you want to call it. Now it's made out of rubber and over time these dry out. But when they're new, the valve can be halfway open and closed and it may not leak. But it probably will. And if it does, you simply take this packing nut and then you tighten it down and it crushes down on this rubber, which is now more like plastic, and it, it forms a better seal around the valve shaft. In our case, uh, I could have done that, but I decided to just, you know what, I'm just replacing the whole pipe well. I'm in the mood to fix something. So this is the anatomy of a water valve. And uh, see if I can take it apart further. Now, you can actually rebuild these. Some people really do. And uh, anywho, wow, look at that. No wonder the damn thing leaked. So when the valve is fully closed, this used to be rubber, now plastic seal, uh, would crush up against the valve body right here. That inner, see where the smaller circle is? Well that right there, this surface, look at how dirty that is. No, no wonder this valve didn't have a, a chance in hell of working. But that is what it seals up against. And you can see how the water flows. It flows in this way, okay? And then it flows, when the valve is open, it goes through the little hole and then out this side. So, um, there should be a seal or something to keep this uh, valve from leaking. Maybe it is just the packing nut that it depends on. It would be on the inside of here. See, look at how dirty that is. You can tell this valve was left halfway open for most of its life. And um, normally you would have at least one clean surface. But yeah, this valve is done for. And 
it's not original. I got plenty of those still in here. Uh, but yeah, you can rebuild these. You can take the screw out. You can replace the you can, without even without even whipping out the, uh, the the torch. You can typically rebuild these valves if you can find the parts. Here's the manufacturer. It's a Muller, made in China, so you know it's definitely not an older, not a very old part. But you can replace seals. You can replace the packing seal. Um, and here it is. Yeah, it's actually not in terrible shape. But tightening, simply tightening this this uh, this nut down on the shaft will typically stop a leak if it's bad enough, or if it's not too bad. Um, as a matter of fact, even the brand new valves that you that you buy to, like the, for example, the the quarter turn valve that I bought and installed today, within about a couple minutes, it started leaking from the packing nut. So within a couple of minutes of installing it, there were drops coming from underneath the valve handle. And that is because the packing nut was too loose from the factory. Uh, so I went ahead and I tightened it down, and that's pretty common. That's why every time you replace a valve, or even move a valve, if you even just open it and close it, you want to come back you know, a couple minutes or a couple, maybe an hour or two later, you want to come back to it and just make sure that it's not leaking because it it, it can leak, even a brand new one. Um, but so far, so good. This is going to have to dry. It's going to take some time. That wood is soaked. Um, I don't think it was leaking for that long. Uh, probably, like I said, maybe about a month or two. It's a long time, but it could have been years, but it wasn't that long. So we'll, we'll, uh, I'm going to let this dry before I put the access panel back on. So, and yeah, this is what I was talking about. You can see there was uh, three valve handles. One here, there's probably a handle here, here, and here. This is where all the plumbing used to be. Um, but now that's been moved up. And if I had to change at this point, since we're on the topic, if I had to change the, the main shower valve, I would have to cut the wall open right here. Actually, figure out where it is and then measure up from the floor. Cut a nice square hole in the drywall. And that's how I'm going to get to it. Um, because removing the, the shower wall is the only other way. Which, <sighs> that's a lot of work. Uh, let's throw this away. Let's see if that fits. So I finished the caulking job. Because I don't really trust... 12 year old to do it. Look at that. Yeah, just like it belongs there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some silicone caulking maybe and put it around it. Or just leave it alone. I think it'll be fine. There's a lip, a raised lip, behind the tile so the water can't drain over it. So there's really no need to seal that. But that looks a lot better than it did. Absolutely. Well, the good news is we have no leaks so far. Everything looks pretty tight. Um, that's staying dry. Everything's good. And it's, uh, we've had about two or three showers since uh, all the repairs are made. But I want to show you something very interesting that was left behind by the gentleman who did our tub refinishing. So we got ourselves a free ventilation hose. Pretty good size one too. <clears throat> yeah, he left that. I didn't notice it until uh, until um, well this morning actually. I went outside. I'm like, why is there a giant hose laying in the front yard? <laughs> uh, the poor kid was clearly having a rough day and he left it and the funny thing is he came back the next day and you think he would have seen it laying in the front yard and said gee maybe i should bring that back with me but no no he didn't do that 
So, <clears throat> looks like we got ourselves a free hose. Now, um, actually, I'm going to be calling them back. I'm going to show you why. And I'll have them pick up their hose. But I'm going to call the company back and have them send somebody a little more experienced. Um, I'm going to request that they do, <clears throat> they do just that because there are some mistakes that I want fixed. And they should be fixed. I paid a lot of money for this job. And, um, well, I mean, I think that... Uh, I think that they owe me one. Besides, I have a five-year warranty. And then they can retrieve their hose. The shiny floor that I installed. Let's take a look at what I found. So, if you look down here, you see a little bit of a, there's something going on here, right? If you look at it from a different angle, He's got paint grips all along here. Um, so to fix that, the installer will have to come back, or preferably a different one, and they will sand that smooth and then just touch it up with an airbrush. Not a big deal. Um, now, they're supposed to send us, or, or show us a, um, now they're supposed to show us, you know, some samples of the textured bottom here um, but they did not do that and what they put on there was well let's just say it's like walking on broken glass um, it is so rough that my feet hurt after standing on it for more than a few minutes um, so I'm wondering if maybe they he did it wrong I don't know. Um, I'm going to see if that can be removed. In all seriousness, it is rough. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think they're supposed to use something a little bit less, you know, but that feels a little bit less like, um, not like broken glass. <laughs> that's what it feels like. Realistically, I think a second coat of paint over top of it will probably help, but I'm going to see if that can be taken off. I'm not going to make a big deal out of that. I probably should, but I'm not going to. I don't want to be a Karen, you know what I'm saying? Otherwise, oh, oh, there's, there's actually one spot over here. So I found a couple of uh, errors in the install that I didn't notice until I started kind of touching things up, cleaning some, cleaning the, uh, there were smudges on the walls and stuff, just fingerprints and shit. And I noticed something that I didn't see before. Let's see if you guys can pick up on this. It looks like this wall is wet. Here, let me dry it off. Okay, so it looks like this wall is wet. I assure you it's bone dry. Yeah. That's not going to fly. Not for what I paid for this job. If I paid $500 for this job, I'd still be pretty upset. Um, but I paid a lot more than that, and I'm pissed. So I'm going to call the company back so they can not only get their hose, but so they can maybe fix this. This is all fixable stuff. Um, it'll have to be block sanded and <clears throat> touched up to bring the gloss back. They could probably mask off a section of this and just do that. I'd be fine with that. Um, and just use an airbrush. No need to disturb the caulking, just, you know, it can be fixed. It's still pretty early in the in the stage, or pretty early in the uh, product life cycle, so I think that'll be fine. Um, the surface, now they did not provide us with any kind of um, sample for what this surface would feel like on our feet. Um, but if you rub your hands on it, it it's actually really rough. Um, it's basically what they did, and I don't believe that the official material that this company is supposed to use, um, I, I think they have a variety of options, and they only gave me, well, they just said we can either texture it or not, and I said, well, yeah, let's texture it because we can't use a bath mat on this. That's what they tell us, no bath mats because it can actually ruin the coating, and I, and I understand why. Chemicals can leach from the black bath mats, and and soften the material. Well, what they told me was they can texture it 
so to avoid any you know any slippage. Now you'll never slip on this. Um, you could you could basically dump baby oil into this tub and you will never slip. But consequently, it's rough on your skin, on your feet, and um, you know I prefer not to have it at all. So I'm gonna see if they can remove this. If they can maybe get this stuff off the tub and redo the bottom. I'm going to ask them if they can. I'm, I'm not going to expect that they'll do that, but I might will ask. There's also one issue here where the coating head, it, 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 it just needs to be touched up. Um, nothing hit, nothing landed on this or anything, but there's one spot where the coating is coming loose and I just need it touched up. Just kind of clean that off. You can actually see the porcelain right below. It's kind of hard because it's a little wet, but one little chip there. You know, it's all fixable stuff. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna I'm gonna call the company and see if they can help me out. If not, I can live with it. But at least I can ask. Now, if they decide, if they offer, if they don't offer to come back, or they give me an attitude, looks like I got myself a nice 12-inch hose, or probably bigger than that, like 18-inch hose. Or whatever I decide to use it for. So thanks for the hose, guys. Um, I don't really like complaining about things like this because I feel like <clears throat> the thing is. Oh, let me let me, uh, let me just say this. There was a time when when you hired someone to do work on your home, there was an agreed upon or a, like a, a gentleman's agreement, if you will, gentlewoman's agreement, whatever. Let's not be too PC here, but it was agreed upon that. You paid for the service, and they would do it correctly. There would be no mistakes. That there was a there was a time when there was a level of expectation, you know, between homeowners and contractors. You you pay for a service. You, you there's an there's an expectation that it would be done properly. You know, if they use caulking, for example, the caulking would match the color of the coating, or there would be no runs and drips and sags in, in, the, in the coating. Um, if you had your car painted at Mako, you would get a better paint job than this. I'm talking the $295 special that they used to run. Um, you know, and they wouldn't get overspray on the floor. You got overspray all over the floor. And I actually taught the kid how to clean it off. He didn't know how to clean it. I said, so he, he starts scrubbing it with a with a spot with a with a, a Brillo pad. I'm like, what are you doing? Well, I gotta get it off. I'm like, no, 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 son. Here, I handed him a bottle of rubbing alcohol. I said, this is how you get it off the floor. I've worked with this. I worked with a very similar material before. Rubbing alcohol it does it just fine. But he also got this shit all over my faucet handles. There's still some left over on this one. Um, you know, I it's not the most expensive faucet in the world, but for God's sake, have a little pride. But he got the coating on the faucet handles, both of them. And I'm like, dude, really? <laughs> really? <sighs> you know, I don't... All I want is for a job done properly. That's all. That's all. Like the time I paid a guy to install a sliding glass door and he did the worst job, the worst possible job imaginable installing that door. And I made a video about it and I got a whole bunch of presumed contractors, you know, clobbering me over my, my scathing words. Like, dude, really? Look, guys like him are making you look bad. Guys who refinish tubs and they leave runs and sags and scratches and they get paint all over your floor and all over your faucet handles, they're making all the good guys look bad because they make the industry look bad. If the kid happens to be watching this video, I'm not mad at you. I just want you to understand that when you come into somebody's home, oh, I found paint, by the way. I found paint on the floor. No shit. There's paint drips on the floor. On the, on the hardwood floors. I'm going to clean that up. I'm not going to even mention it. You come to somebody's house to do a job. They're trusting you to do the job right. And you must have the... Ex I mean, if, you, if that means you have to do more time working alongside another contractor or another installer or another free finisher, then damn well do it. Because 
you know, it, he didn't do a bad job overall. He actually did a, and I did tell him, I said, you, you did a pretty good job. But here are the things that we need to improve upon. Number one, your caulking sucks. <laughs> Number two, yeah, he left a chip over there, and he did fix that, but it's like, I, I shouldn't have to, I shouldn't have to do that. You know, whatever. I watched Lewis Rothman's Eugene series, if you know what I'm talking about, and, um, and I gotta say, you know, shit like this happens all the time. People just don't take the pride that they used to. It's all, just give me the money, here I'll do whatever, just give me the money, have a nice day. That's, you know, come on. If, if the kid wants a referral, he's not going to get one. I'm not going to refer this company to anybody at this point. But one bad apple shouldn't spoil the bunch. It's, it's an important thing. That's so why I'm going to call the company up on Monday and I'm going to say, look, here's the situation, here's what he did right, and here's what he needs to work on. Um, I only say this because I don't want another person to have to deal with this, you know. So, anyway, well, that's all for now. Thanks, uh, thanks for your, for your patronage. And I probably should have gotten plastic <laughs> shower curtain oh, hangers. Yeah, these don't really roll so nice on the aluminum shower rod. I'll have to clean I'm gonna clean that up with some steel wool. That'll look nice. Get some steel wool, WD-40, that'll shine that sucker right up. Well anyway, I'm gonna stop filming and start polishing my pole. Have a great day.